Hey, welcome to PC World. I'm Hayden Dingman, and I am here today with the Vive Pro. It's not really a Vive 2.0, but that's kind of what I've been thinking of it as uh, at home. Um, it's the first upgrade, or the first headset upgrade we've had in two years uh, since the original Vive and Rift came out in uh, 2016. Um, so yeah, first thing, as you can see, it's now blue. Uh, I can't really say I'm a big fan. I think I liked the uh, dark black or sleek black look of the original. Um, I don't know, this kind of, it's not as bad in person as it is in their renders, but it's still very blue. Uh, but anyways, uh, aside from that, you can see uh, a lot of the, the improvements to this have actually been uh, folded in from last year's deluxe audio strap, which we also uh, put a review of uh, up on the site last year. Uh, that was the first time that we had this rigid plastic headband and also the built-in uh, headphones. So a lot of those improvements carry over into the Vive Pro from the start. Uh, you can just snap these uh, headphones down on your ears. And now adjustment, instead of being like a crazy three strap system, uh, is the bicycle wheel system, which is used on HoloLens also. Uh, so you just turn this knob in the back, uh, very easy. Uh, slip the thing on and off in about 10 seconds now, which is definitely not the case with the old model. Uh, the big difference from last year's deluxe audio strap is there's also now much more of a counterweight here on the back. Uh, you can see it's a pretty sizable piece of plastic. Uh, good and bad things here. First of all, the headset feels a lot lighter. Um, so before, if you had the original Vive or uh, uh, the Rift even, um, front of the headset would kind of pull down on your face a lot. Uh, there wasn't really anything to offset that, and it was especially bad on the Vive because it only had elastic straps. Uh, it really would just hang heavy, and if you look down, you would always get this thing where the headset would pull down towards the ground. Uh, this now solves both those problems. The rigid plastic keeps it up against your face, and also the counterweight offsets some of the weight in the back, so I think this is actually technically heavier overall than the original Vive, but it feels lighter. But the one thing that I have noticed, and this is sort of a niche problem because I have a, a very tall gamer chair with a, a headrest that comes up above my head. Um, but because of that, uh, seated VR with the Vive Pro is actually much more annoying. Um, this little piece of plastic, as small as it looks, actually pushes my head forward from my chair. Yeah, I think that if you have a tall chair, this new Vive Pro model is gonna be a little bit awkward. It's clear HTC really just wants to focus on the, the room scale environment, which is what distinguishes the Vive still from everybody else. They still have the best tracking, uh, in my opinion. Um, but for those of you who are using C to VR, still uh, a bit of an issue. The Vive control box is also, I think, worth talking about, or the Vive Pro control box. Um, they did redesign this, so the old model had on the back a uh, USB uh, display port, power, and an HDMI. That HDMI port has been taken off now, uh, so you can see it's only going to be mini display port on the back, um, which is fine. Most graphics cards have more display port capabilities than they do HDMI anyway. Uh, on the front, they've also redesigned the cable. Um, they have a custom port now. It's very, uh, I don't know, large. Um, but that replaces both the original ribbon cable, which most people probably got rid of. Uh, I think they stopped sending Vives out with the original ribbon cable like two months in. Uh, but if you have that, this is a, a much sleeker cable. Uh, it also replaces the three-in-one cable, which is the solution they had before. That one, of course, was, uh, I think, HDMI, power, and USB on the front also. Uh, this one is just the single port. You plug it in. Uh, it's a little bit finicky, but it goes straight in. And then you also have a power button on the front, which you're going to press um, to turn it on, and you'll have a little green light illuminate there. Uh, I don't know many people that are shutting the Vive off in between sessions, but I guess if that's something that concerns you, you can do it. Uh, for me, it's been only a thing that I use when I need to reset the hardware. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, a much sleeker box than before, I think. But the biggest improvement by far is actually the resolution, which is a thing that we can't really demonstrate to you here. Uh, but the original Vive had a resolution of 2160 by 1200. The Vive Pro jumps that up to 2880 by 1600, which if I remember from the HTC marketing materials, I think is a 73% increase in pixel density. Uh, it's still not quite enough to get rid of the, the screen door effect. Um, but it gets a lot closer. Uh, I've been using it uh, at home for a variety of demos, including just the Steam home environment. And the thing that I've noticed the most difference in is text. 
uh, which should, should not come as a surprise to anybody that's used the original Vive. Uh, the 2160 by 1200 seemed like a great resolution at the time, or at least was much better than what we had had with the DK2 and those earlier Rift prototypes. Um, but uh, text was always still pretty blurry unless you did like size 72 point font. Um, nowadays, uh, with the Vive Pro, I've noticed I can read all of the Steam home menus, which are especially small. Uh, a lot of that text is uh, probably 12 point font, which used to look very blurry and you had to squint to read it. All that looks crystal clear now. Um, games, I don't notice it as much. Uh, games already looked pretty good on the Vive. Uh, this does get, the, some of the lines look a little crisper. Uh, some of the backgrounds look a little less blurry, but overall you can still tell, oh, I can see the pixels a little. Um, I think that we'll still need at least one more jump before we fully get rid of the screen door effect, but at that point we're talking about 4K at 90 frames per second, um, which is probably a few years down the line unless uh, foveated rendering becomes more of a solution than it is right now. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty nice headset. Uh, the main problem is the price, uh, $800 for just the headset. Um, that doesn't include, you know, the base stations or the controllers. Uh, I'm gonna guess it's gonna be $1,000 for the whole package. Uh, the $800 deal seems to be aimed at people who already have a Vive. Uh, and to be honest, I think that's who the Vive Pro is primarily aimed at to begin with. It's the enthusiast, it's the person that has really wondered where we we're gonna get our next, uh, our upgrade from. Uh, that's me, uh, I remember, you know, back in the DK1 days, it felt like a year later we had the DK2, and then a year after that we were seeing the Vive, and it felt like these upgrades were coming so fast at the time. Uh, and then it's been two years since we got the consumer versions, so there hasn't really been a lot going on. Uh, for the people that have been wondering, like, hey, when are we gonna see a, a higher res HMD, this is that. Um, but it doesn't really feel like a Vive 2. I think they're smart to not really call this a second generation uh, piece of hardware. It's more of like a Vive 1.5. Uh, Vive Pro is a pretty apt name, I guess. Uh, but it's expensive, and so it's also going to be a pretty niche item, I think. Uh, most people are going to want to stick with the original Vive, which is a $500 box. Uh, and that comes with the base stations and the controllers. Uh, 800 for just the headset or 1000 so twice as much for, for the full kit. Uh, that seems a bit outrageous, but uh, we will keep you updated. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more stuff to come this year in VR. Uh, Oculus, the Santa Cruz prototype we saw at Oculus Connect last year, that's expected to come maybe later this year or early next year. Um, so there's more stuff coming. Uh, but for now, this is it. Uh, Vive Pro, $800, and it's blue.